Hey guys, Kyle Sutton here with the Better the Berg Show, and I am at the Children's Institute in Pittsburgh today talking to their CEO, Wendy Party, and we'll get to it right after this. Wendy, um, thanks for having me. It's, oh, we're it's really cool to be, be here. here. Thank you so much. We're glad you could join us. Yeah, um, so the Children's Institute has been a part of Pittsburgh for a long time, right? Yes, since 1902. Okay. Um, well, what do you do? I mean, I, I imagine with that sort of history, a lot of people have an idea, but may, maybe they don't know everything that goes on here. Well, and, and I've been on board for about a year, came in uh, last August, and it's interesting because I think that people know the Children's Institute through various uh, ways and know us for various programs, but we have essentially three kind of overarching um, service lines. Sure. We have our day school, which where we serve about 200 students who yeah. come in from about 60 different school districts. Okay. And then we have our physical health services and behavioral health services, where we do your traditional physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. We have um, physician services on hand as well. And then our last um, kind of overarching program at programmatic area is our foster care services and okay. adoption services, which we call Project STAR. And so we work with families who are at risk for having a child placed outside of the home and okay. try to you know, stabilize or um, engage in foster care services. Okay, so it could be on either end, a family that um, is struggling and needs some help in their own home or potentially with a child has already been placed somewhere and hoping that that family is... That we can, we can reunite, yes, sure. absolutely. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay, so how do um, how do people get connected with the Children's Institute? Um, there's various ways. A lot of our referrals come from you know families self referral that they recognize the reputation that, that the Children's Institute has, and mm -hmm. so they'll they'll call in, they'll look okay. at our website, and they'll right. connect our services. Sometimes it's through a pediatrician or a primary care physician. Sometimes mm -hmm. the referrals come from the schools, and then for our Project Star services, most of those referrals are coming from the Children, Youth, and Family Services. Sure, program. sure. Okay, yeah. uh, tell me a little bit more about the day school. Um, I, I just got the tour, everybody, and it's a, a, just a really beautiful facility that offers a lot to a lot of kids. So, um, and yeah. our day school is pretty amazing, mm -hmm. um, and we're getting ready. We're getting uh, ready to launch the new school year, and so getting the classrooms prepared. But we have roughly about 200 students who come in, and it's tr like a traditional school where they're coming in Monday through Friday. Um, they come, you know, in on the buses, and you see the kids unloading, and it's just, you know, they're they're glad to be sure. here. But um, typically, those are children who have who cannot be supported in their their traditional homeschool environment, and so they come to us. And we do, um, you know, regular. We have music classes, gym classes, yeah. um, traditional educational services that that um, meet the child where they are with their unique needs. But ultimately, we're always trying to position them for kind of the most independent life postgraduate. Right. Um, being able to be uh, inserted into the community and so one of the new programs that we started just a year ago is called our um, it's, it's like a work ready type of program working with students who are between the ages of 18 to 21 mm -hmm. and going out into the community they volunteer at different settings and it's ideally positioning them for either competitive employment or volunteer opportunities within okay. um, the, the world after they graduate from from our Program. Sure, so just kind of e extending that, that meaning in, in life after right. you graduate from one step but in, into another. Right. Yeah. right, very good. Yeah. Okay, well one of the things I always like to ask about um, is um, how people can help, um, how people could donate, how people could volunteer, what um, if somebody is seeing this and just learning for the first time and it connects with them, what, what could they do? There's, there's many ways. And, um, you know, we are embedded at our main campus, we are embedded in kind of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's important to be a, a good neighbor to our, you know, within our community. And so some people know us through our um, playground facilities, they enjoy our garden areas. Um, and so people can interact with us in, in various ways. Yeah. They can come in and volunteer. We always need volunteers for different, uh, you know, things that we have going on. They can host a community event. Um, we've had, you know, this, this past year I've seen people who have um, donated, you know, proceeds from birthday parties, yeah. from even engagement events or um, weddings that they have donated the proceeds to the Children's Institute. They can go online. You know, a basic simple thing is that, you know, we really want to get our, our great message out of what we are doing for, for kids and families. And so just following us on social media and retweeting or reposting yeah, right, those right. things that okay. we share and getting the word out because there are families who are still in need of services and need that type of support. Mm -hmm. So something as simple as that, 
But um, you know, there's lots of opportunities to plug in. So right. definitely visit our website, learn more about us, and there's an opportunity for everyone to be part of our community as well. Yeah, that's so important. What, what a shame for um, services to be available in a family in need, but not not be able to make that connection. Right. So yeah, help, help right. make that connection, everybody. <laughs> and one other place is that I referenced about, you know, we really try to um, have our students go out into the community that if there are employers who have volunteer opportunities that, you know, you never get around to getting that filing done or right. getting, you know, right. mailings prepared, that our students love those type of opportunities that sure. they can come on site and, and help, you know, get ready for, for real world yeah. real wor world work. And so if there are those types of employers who have those opportunities, we'd love to be a part of that. Very good, very good. Um, okay, before we close, I know there's, um, we're here in Squirrel Hill on your, your main campus, but you do have um, uh, other offices ar around the area, right? We do, and I think that's a, a common mis um, misperception of the Children's Institute, that we're of course well known for our main campus here in Squirrel Hill. Mm -hmm. But um, our outpatient services are offered conveniently in Wexford, Pleasant Hills, Bridgeville, okay. and also in Norwin Hills as well. And so if there are families who need those services, we really try to be um, as convenient to them as possible. Right, yeah, so you're covering uh, the, the, the whole area there. Absolutely. Very good. Well, yeah. well, thank you, Wendy. I really appreciate you having me here and, and the chance to learn about the children. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it yeah and guys thanks for watching better the berg um reach out to the children's institute if you feel like um you might know somebody who could benefit from uh the help they offer here or if you would like to find a way to help yourself all right we'll talk to you soon take care